Okay, in this example associated with the general stiffness approach, we are first, let's just review here what this uh, uh, general stiffness method is all about. And that is, at least procedurally, it's all about this sort of five step approach where we're going to write, where we're going to identify the, what the kinematic degrees of freedom are in our model, identify the force displacement relationships that we're going to be using for the members or the elements in the model. We'll write equilibrium equations. We'll solve for these unknown displacements, and then we'll back substitute in to our force displacement equations to get member forces, and then maybe some additional post-processing to get to other uh, response quantities of, of interest. Now, the, the thing that makes it the generalized stiffness um, approach is really about how we're going to go about assembling and putting things in from the force displacement equation into the equilibrium equation. So that's what we're going to begin to illustrate here in this bridge pier uh, scenario. Right, so we've got a typical highway overpass. Some people would call it the underpass, but we're going to look at the structure that's above. We have a three column um, bridge pier, big heavy cap at the top columns that come down. We're going to presume just for the sake of this analysis that these columns end right here at the ground level. Um, that will give us a relatively square kind of profile. In reality though, uh, you will oftentimes see that structurally these columns go down quite a bit below the subsurface to get to the, the real foundation uh, level. But for our purposes this will be uh, good enough. Don't get distracted too much by on the drawing this little gap that seems to show up there. There's no intention to show a gap there. That, that column goes all the way down to the foundation. So six meters, six meters in between and six meters high. We have this lateral load um, that we're interested in. Now you might look at this and say why the heck are we looking at lateral loads? Um, obviously trucks and other vehicles go across the bridge and that would be a gravity loading acting downwards. So why are you looking at this lateral stiffness which is all going to be all about we move or we apply a lateral load P to the side and what's that displacement and, and what's that relationship between those two. Well if we're in an earthquake situation we care an awful lot about this lateral stiffness and that's indeed um, where we're headed with this particular uh, problem. We got same columns all the way through, the same EI over L, and then when we look at this beam that goes across, we're going to make this uh, crude assumption that EI over L of the beams are much greater than EI over L for the columns. Reason why that's going to be crucial is that in this, as we approach the general stiffness method here, we're going to say, look, we only want this one displacement delta up here and its relationship to this force P, that we're seeking a relationship that is P equals some stiffness times delta. And so <coughs> this very simplistic view of things, then capturing the essence of it in this kind of fashion, um, it's helpful to say, okay, EI over L the beam much greater than EI over L the com column, we essentially have a rigid beam meaning when this thing moves over sideways, then the model that we might be thinking about would look something like so, where fixed foundation on each of the columns, and when this thing again moves over according to P, if the beam is rigid, when this thing moves over, being as thick and big and blocky as it is, it's not going to have hardly any rotations. So that means this thing slides over with the beam having no rotation and we end up with reverse curvature in the columns such that it's fixed fixed with sway in each and every case. And that tells us then that each one of these columns then has a little free by diagram is going to end up with, of course, the bending moments that we could get from a slope deflection model, and that would be a 6EI over L squared times delta on either end, and from that we would find out that the shear forces 
that go along with this would be equal to 12EI over L cubed times delta, whatever the delta might be. And so note, these are three springs in parallel. Their stiffnesses will add together. right? And that should make sense just from, take a look at free by diagram of the beam in its displaced position where you've got, again, no curvature in the beam because it's rigid. We've got this force P induces column shears that because the columns are identical, then those are all the same V's and each and every one of them are going to be equal to 12 EI over L cubed times delta. So add those up by equilibrium, 3V is equal to P, and we have 3 times 12 EI over L cubed, that'd just be one of those uh, columns, times delta is equal to P, and so the generalized then stiffness coefficient, or really just stiffness, in this case we only got one, our K equivalent is then 36 EI over L cubed, which again is just nothing more than three times the stiffness of one of the columns because of the parallel spring nature. Okay? That's a, a short, simple example of the generalized stiffness approach. Project out a displacement pattern and then by equilibrium and our force displacement relationship that we end up with through other models, then we come up with what the simplistic um, expression would be of the relationship between the applied force pattern and the resulting displacement pattern that we're monitoring at one and only one location, and that's this drift up here at the right.